There is a story, usually attributed to the Native American tradition, which illuminates different ways of paying attention. An elder, talking to a child, says, I have two wolves fighting in my heart. One wolf is fearful, vengeful, envious, resentful, and deceitful. The other wolf is compassionate, loving, generous, truthful, and peaceful. The child asks, which wolf will win the fight? The elder responds, the one I feed. That doesn't mean we try to deny or hurt or kill the angry wolf. If we did that, we'd end up in a long battle, all the while somehow making that wolf more powerful through our hostility and fear. Hating that wolf sucks the strength right out of us. Instead, we calmly pay attention to the angry wolf and let go of believing they have the answers. If we can do that, they end up lying down next to us, no longer an enemy. We help strengthen the kind and loving wolf, giving it nourishment and support so that we can follow it. That peaceful wolf can become our steady companion and show us the way through all kinds of different life experiences. Restful or chaotic, enjoyable or disappointing experiences may come and go, but we can have a guide with us through it all. This is what mindfulness can help you do. Mindfulness allows us to see our thoughts and feelings as they are beginning. It's very powerful to know what we're feeling as we're feeling it, know what we're thinking as we're thinking it. With mindfulness, we can choose what will strengthen and bring into action, and we can choose what we will gently let go of. We don't have to be at the mercy of old habits or old ways of thinking or old ways of being. We are empowered. It just takes practice. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, no. You want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. <laughs> I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time, because you know what? Someone just shared something with us, it's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. Negative thinking is one of the biggest obstacles we face in experiencing more happiness. But there's hope. 
Here are two strategies based on cognitive behavioral therapy to defeat your negative thinking. The first is to distract. When you're heading into a social gathering and you begin to wonder, what if I don't connect with anyone? Am I even likable? Do something that lifts your mood. Generating a positive emotion will counteract the anxiety you feel. Listen to a song that makes you smile, or take a moment to appreciate people in your life who love you. Positive emotions literally undo the effects of anxiety by lowering our heart rate and muscle tension. We often believe that our negative thinking is true, but in reality, our minds feed us messages that range from mild embellishments to outright lies. Here, we might prefer to combat. Imagine yourself in court. You are the prosecutor, and your negative thought is the defendant. He's guilty, and you know it, but he's pleading not guilty and sticking to his story. Your task is to get the judge to hear your side. So when the negative thought shouts out, you're not good enough at your job. You need to consult the evidence you have at your disposal to prove it wrong. Argue back with the strongest piece of evidence you can find. For example, I am good enough because every performance review I've had has been positive. I'm currently being considered for that promotion, and my boss told me last week how much she enjoys working with me. Bring your best version of a tough lawyer to that courtroom and convince the judge that the negative thought doesn't deserve his or her attention. After all, the judge is you. Both of these strategies, distract and combat, are skills anyone can learn and get better at with practice. Remember, with each negative thought you defeat, you've successfully earned your own happiness.